If you look down at the Earth at night, the astronauts say, the brightest spot on the planet is the Las Vegas Strip. The man who turned up the wattage in Las Vegas is casino mogul Steve Wynn. He set off a building boom in the 1980s that turned a bunch of gambling joints into an international tourist spot. Las Vegas became the fastest growing city in America until the recession hit it hard. Now the population is in decline and the gambling industry is in desperate shape. Revenues in Steve Wynn's Las Vegas properties plummeted 32 percent last quarter, but the economy didn't stop him from opening his most opulent casino resort yet, the Encore. I've known Steve Wynn both personally and professionally for about 15 years. He invited us to the Encore's opening night. If all of our customers and friends are at the tables, gentlemen and ladies, place your bets. Let the games begin. At 67, Steve Wynn is a legend in Las Vegas. You're going to start a gambling joint, start a gambling joint. The man with the Midas touch who added glamour to the gambling industry. Isn't this fun? That's perfect. Even in this recession, thousands came to try their luck at his new casino. That's what I'm talking about! Encore cost nearly $2.3 billion, a risky bet in a bad economy. Why in this economic environment would you open a well, hotel? Well, I'll tell you right now that if I had any idea that this would be, I wouldn't if I had a choice. But this project was started four years ago. These things have a huge lead time. The gambling industry has been battered by the recession and taken the city of Las Vegas down with it. Some casinos stand half built. Unemployment is over 10 percent. And while Steve Wynn has had to slash employees' pay and lower room prices, he plows ahead, doing whatever it takes to get customers to his new hotel. This is Encore. And yes, he really was sitting on top of the building. Next time, we do this in the lobby. The Encore is connected to his other Las Vegas hotel, The Wynn, and he has a third in Macau, China. Inside his hotels are fantasy lands for well hilled adults. He brought gourmet restaurants and high-end shopping to the Strip. His hotels may be extravagant, but his business strategy is conservative. His company is not highly leveraged and has over a billion dollars in cash to help ride out the recession. I want to understand a bit about the casino business. So do I. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> the only way to win in a casino is to own one. Own one. <laughs> Unless you're very lucky. <laughs> and he says, even when people are lucky, they usually gamble away their winnings. You have never known in your entire life a gambler who comes here and wins big and and walks quits. away. Never. So you know nobody hardly that over the stretch of time is ahead. Nope. The customer's loss is Steve Wynn's gain. He is a billionaire, but he isn't all that interested in gambling. His passion is creating the resorts. Are you satisfied with the way the light is hitting our flowers? He works closely with his design team and signs off on nearly every detail. I love this restaurant, Roger. Why do you focus so much on how it looks? I can't help myself. It's a sickness. My doctor says if I take my medication, I'm no danger to anybody but myself. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> and that brings you the greatest joy. Yes. The person who knows him best is his wife and business partner 41 years, Elaine Wynn. And although the Wynns have filed for divorce, they say she will remain part of the business and on the board of directors. What is it that he has? He brings a businessman's intelligence and awareness of what it takes to make a property successful, and yet he can put that on a side shelf and go crazy making the most extraordinary environments. He understands innately what the public will respond to. And what the public will pay for. Does the money matter a lot? It enables him to have a, a kind of freedom. There's rich freedom and poor freedom. <laughs> you know, you can be a ski bum and a beach bum. <laughs> That's poor freedom. That's poor freedom. <laughs> yeah. Steve, is, Steve likes rich, rich freedom. freedom. 
Steve Wynn collects beautiful, often extravagant things, from great art to big yachts to the largest pear-shaped diamond in the world. In a cruel irony, this man who pursues beauty is losing his sight. He has a degenerative eye condition called retinitis pigmentosa. And I was born with this recessive and rather rare condition that has diminished my vision uh, since childhood. Night vision when I was very young and then peripheral vision as you get older. Because he's losing his peripheral vision, he often leans on people to guide him. He can see what's directly in front of him, but it's like looking through a tube and the circle keeps getting smaller. And you have an appetite for visual things. I do indeed. And you know, that, that, that's the kind of a thing that can be a source of great anxiety. You say, well, suppose I can't enjoy the things that I, that I love seeing so much. So there you are. That's it. You're face to face with the threat, the menace. I won't be able to see this at some point in the future, even though I can see it now. What this painting has is mood. But he says he doesn't feel sorry for himself and continues to enjoy his extraordinary art collection. Le Rev. That's Le Rev, the dream by Picasso. In 2006, Wynn had a contract to sell it for $139 million, a record price for a painting. He was showing it off to some friends when... In gesturing to the picture, I turned to the right and caught her right on the arm and poked a hole in the picture the size of the end of my thumb. We stood there in, in shock. I can't believe I've done it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Th and then I said, thank God it was me and not someone else. And here is a photograph. There's, I don't know if you can see the, the picture. There's the tear right there. He had the picture restored, and, and it's no longer for sale. But the fact of the matter is, what stands historically is that the painting, the painting was damaged by its owner. Uh, the Clouseau of collectors win. But look, uh, people make mistakes. Steve Wynn has made few mistakes in his business career. He grew up in the gambling business. His father, Michael Wynn, owned a string of bingo parlors. When Steve was 10, his father took him to Las Vegas for the first time. It was 1952, and Nevada was the only state in America where gambling was legal. Your father yeah. was a charming man. But a, but a compulsive gambler. And you're in the gambling business. That's one of many ironies it is. about you. It is, and it's accidental, but it is an irony. Uh, my father had a terrible problem with gambling. He was a, a guy that enjoyed that activity so much that he lost control of it. Michael Wynn died during heart surgery at age 47, leaving the family with a gambling debt of $350,000. Steve Wynn took over the family business, made a success of it, and paid back the money his father owed. I would give anything for a half hour, 15 minutes with my father to walk him through anything that good fortune has allowed to come my way these past 40 years. And have him stand outside and look on the building and it says... Oh, uh, Wynn. He changed his name. <laughs> when he was a kid, he was Weinberg. In fact, you were born Weinberg. And then he changed it to when I was about six months old. Steve and Elaine Wynn moved to Las Vegas in 1967. His career took off when he invested in the Golden Nugget and added hotel rooms to the casino. Hi, I'm Steve Wynn, and this is one of the beautiful suites in the Golden Nugget of Las Vegas, which... He became its president by the time he was 31 and convinced Frank Sinatra not only to sing, but to appear in a series of commercials. Hi, Mr. Sinatra. I'm Steve Wynn. I run this place. You see, I get enough towels. The Golden Nugget became Wynn's golden egg. Las Vegas was just a bunch of casinos in the 1980s when Steve Wynn built the Mirage, the first luxury resort on the Strip. Outside, a volcano exploded every 15 minutes. Inside, he hired Sigford and Roy to perform. Next door, he built another hotel and brought Cirque du Soleil to Las Vegas for the first time. The Strip wasn't just about gambling anymore, and Steve Wynn was hailed as a visionary. I've been given too much credit for that, really. <laughs> if you look at Las Vegas in the 1980s, there hadn't been anything built since 1973, new. And so the city was in a time warp. And, and as has so often been the case 
in the valley of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. <laughs> so, you know? so, so you had an idea and you were king. All of a sudden, I looked like uh, I was a rocket scientist. Not a rocket scientist, but a showman. Captain of the Britannia. Ready, aim, fire! When he imploded the old Dunes Hotel in 1993, the event became a Steve Wynn extravaganza live on television. Out of the ashes, he built the Bellagio, at the time, the most expensive hotel in the world. He sold the Bellagio and Mirage Resorts in 2000 and pocketed more than $600 million. By then, Las Vegas was calling itself the entertainment capital of the world. Steve Wynn is known for his charm, but he's also known for his explosive temper. I wish that I was a more considerate person, and to the extent that I demonstrate consideration for other people at my age, I wish that I had gotten to that point earlier. He got to this state of self-awareness with the help of a friend, the Dalai Lama. He says to me, when you get angry, when, I'll do an imitation. When you get angry, when you lose your temper, <laughs> when you think that you shout and react in, in a poor way to other people, it is a result of a false sense of yourself, an inflated sense of yourself that is worthless. I'm Steve Wynn. And what keeps Steve Wynn on top while other casino moguls are tottering near bankruptcy is that he never gambles with his own bottom line and he has always been driven by a single vision. To see if I could do, if I could make people go wow. To see if I could create a place that it was a wonderland, that it was better than the outside world where everything like Joel Gray said in Cabaret, inside everything is beautiful. Even the girls are beautiful. Even the band is beautiful. That seemed like such a fun way to spend your life.